What's happening, gang? It's your boy Retro back again with another reaction video. Yeah, yeah. Say we got another huge up. I know you guys could probably already tell it is going down. Just by that title alone, we just seen one of the most disastrous sit downs. Kamala Harris's town hall hosted by Oprah Winfrey, guys. And I'm just going to say, you know it's bad when Oprah Winfrey herself can't save you guys. I'm excited to get in this one, so we're not straight into it. So make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Before we get into it, you guys, hit that like button. Also hit that subscribe button for your boy. Without further ado, let's get into it, folks. Take a look at this clip here. I mean, Kamala Harris just cannot answer questions straight to save her life. Take a look. So, Madam Vice President, we are, like many, many young Americans, just experiencing a very high cost of living. We ended up giving up our apartment, moving in with our parents who were so gracious to take us in for over a year so that we could save money and ultimately buy a home because that's what we thought the American dream was to... to yep get yeah. married and buy a home and have a baby. And now here we are and our mortgage is incredibly higher than what we thought it would be. And my sister and our brother-in-law are living with us right now so that they can hopefully one day do the same. And mm -hmm. while it's beneficial for us because they help us pay off some of our mortgage, it's also beneficial for them because they can save on cheaper rent. But mm -hmm. we really would love to know what your plan is to help lower the cost of living. Yeah. I, first of all, thank you both for being here. And yours is a, a story I hear around the country as I travel. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family. Where is she going? Guys, I'm going to get so upset. This is the same person who has essentially ruined, destroyed, stepped on and smashed our American dream, guys. Now she's playing in folks' faces by just beating around the bush, giving another word salad. I mean, come on. It's a simple question. Listen to her. She doesn't know how to answer, guys, so she just beats around and stumbles. Listen to this. I can't make this up. A story I hear around the country as I travel. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams. Rightly having the right. Okay. To have the right to have aspirations and dreams. I mean, come on, y'all. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm going to cut it out, but I just have to point this out. She is going to give the most bogus answer. You can already tell. And um, in terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many recently far more elusive than it's been. She almost wanted to say it's unattainable for this generation is what we are seeing. And that's exactly what we're seeing on the streets. And you can see it just by their face. Look at her face. She is fed up already. Like, yeah, it's t it's definitely tougher. It's hard to obtain. And I'm, honestly, it's almost near impossible at this point, especially for our younger generations. I mean, come on. Listen to her, folks. Is for this generation and so many recently far more elusive than it's been. Elusive. And we need to deal with that. And there are a number of ways. One is bringing down the cost of everyday necessities, including groceries. So that's why I'm taking on, for example, price gouging, um, which is when, you know, most companies. In Not inflation, guys. She won't acknowledge that the problem is, is if it's with inflation. She keeps saying that, you know, cus or, uh, companies, business owners and store owners, they're, they're price gouging. I don't believe that's the case. They're they're raising the prices to deal with this inflation that we're we're, we're dealing with. I mean, come on, listen to her lie. Cost of everyday necessities, including groceries. So that's why I'm taking on, for example, price gouging, um, which is when you know most companies and corporations are good, but for those bad ones, they take advantage of people, especially during a pandemic or extreme weather, and they end up jacking up prices. And there needs to be accountability and consequence for that. So I'm going to be taking on price gouging. But it's also about dealing with what we need to do around home ownership, right? So as someone mentioned during this, this film, uh, look, I grew up a child of a mother who worked very hard. She raised- Folks, have we heard this before? Do we need to hear it again? 
Is it even pertaining to the question whatsoever? I mean, come on, cut the crap, Kamala Harris. Listen to her. Ship, right? So as someone mentioned during this, this film, uh, look, I grew up a child of a mother who worked very hard. She raised me and my sister. And she saved up. And by the time I was a teenager, she was able to buy a home. And um, we grew up actually for a long time in an apartment on top of a child care center that was owned by the woman we called our second mother because she helped my mother raise us. So essentially, she's telling this young couple that the in-laws have to live with you for essentially another 10 years. 10 years until the child is at least a teenager is when your in-laws will be able to move out. You'll finally be able to have a house to yours. I mean, guys, get a load of, I mean, and it doesn't stop there. Listen to her word salad that she just delivered to Oprah Winfrey. Not even Oprah can get a straight answer out of it. This is about the strength of who we are as Americans. And this movement that we're in about, as I like to say, Seeing in the face of a stranger a neighbor? Yes, 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 right? yes, yes. An extension of love thy neighbor, that you literally in the face of a stranger see a neighbor. Yes. And approach each other with that level of dignity and grace and, and kindness. This is about the... Yeah. I cannot make this type of stuff up. I mean, come on, y'all. She is out here just beating around the bush. She's making it up on the fly. She's stretching her words. I mean, come on. This is unbelievably cringe. Look at this. Oprah's face tells it all, guys. Take a look. We love our country. Not I you. love our country. I know Not we all you. do. That's why everybody's here right now. We love our country. We, we take pride in the privilege of being American. Look at Oprah. She said, I'm have to, this is probably, I, I, I get this was probably about halfway through right here. And Oprah has just had enough, guys. Look at her, just her, her manner as her body language says it all. She's like, I'm going to sit back for this one. I know this is going to be another doozy. And listen to Kamala Harris. We love our country. We, we love, I love our country. And because we love our country, we love our, like, gut. We don't need to hear that. Let's hear what you actually stand for, Kamala Harris. Stop lying to the people. If you loved your country, you would have came forth as a true candidate with policy, policies, agenda, and a plan for the people. But you don't have any of that to go against Donald Trump with. We can see it right now. Listen. Pride in the privilege of being American. Look at Oprah. And this is a moment where we can and must come together as Americans understanding we have so much more in common than what separates us. Let's come together with the, the character that we are so proud of about who we are, which is we are an optimistic people. We are an optimistic people. What does that even mean? Americans, by character, are people who have dreams and ambitions and aspirations. We believe in what is possible. We believe in what can be, and we believe in fighting for that. That's how, that's how we came into being, because the people before us understood that one of the greatest expressions for the love of our country, one of the greatest expressions of patriotism. I'm not sure if, like, no, also, guys, I want to reference the hair thing. So her hair is covered up, her ear. Um, and we are seeing she's wearing those pearl ear earrings again. So she may be doing this whole drawn out like delay. You can tell that she has like a kind of a, a delay or a, it almost seems like a slur to her speech, you know, pausing in between and stuff. And sometimes you do that when you're getting, you know, fed answers or fed what to say. You're kind of stopping because maybe you didn't get it or it hasn't came through on the, you know, the, the recording yet. But it just seems like this is so unnatural. Just the whole exchange, everything she's saying, she doesn't really have any like... I don't, I haven't got a point yet. No point to any of the statements she's made. It's just a roundabout, very generalization. This seems like when you ask AI a question and it just gives you like everything but the meat and potatoes. And that's what we're getting from Kamala Harris right here. And listen, look at just key in on um, the, not only audience, but key in on Oprah Winfrey and her, just the way her body language, it tells it all. She's had enough. I mean, come on. She thought it was bad, but she didn't know it was this bad. So I can't keep covering this up. Listen to her. Expressions. For the love of our country, one of the greatest expressions of patriotism 
is to fight for the ideals of who we are, which includes freedom to make decisions about your own body, freedom to be safe from gun violence, freedom. Look at Oprah's face. She looks at the crowd. She's just like, are you guys? Here? Look at the, she looks directly at the camera, actually. Look at her face, guys. She's like, are you hearing this right now? Kamala Harris seems so unsure of every word she's saying. I mean, listen to her, guys. This is comedy. And it's really sad. I shouldn't be laughing because this is sad. This is who they're trying to put up as a leader of the free world. I mean, come on, guys. Gun violence. Freedom to have access to the ballot box. Freedom to be who you are and just be. To love who you love openly and with pride. Freedom <laughs> to just be. Is this is this a, is this a spoken word poetry like a slam poetry night? Is that what I'm getting? This almost gives me slam poetry vibes. What am I hearing? This is freedom, freedom to be who you want to be, freedom to fly like a butterfly, freedom to speak. Just come get get out of here with this. No way. What really drives me nuts is that people are actually buying this, getting in line, and, and wearing the Kamala Harris Tim Wall shirt and standing rallying behind this lady. Like, how can't you see through this? This is actually like a shirt, like the a comedian doing a skit or a sketch right now this is what it seems like to me. This is no way this is real. Pride, freedom to just be. Hmm. <laughs> and that's who we are. We believe in all that. And so this is a moment where we stand knowing what we are fighting for. We're not fighting against. It's what we're fighting for. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Thank right. you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my, look at that. The That was the most cringiest. Oprah's just like, please shake my hand and end this interview, please. Please, before you say anything else that you're going to, you're gonna regret this, all of this. Like, come on. About as fake as a $4 bill. Look at this Kamala Harris full flip-flop mode, even on Oprah, guys. I have to show you this, look at this. I'm, I'm a gun you... owner, Tim Walls is a gun. I did not know that. <laughs> Didn't and I thought that breaks was in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I, I if someone breaks into my house, they're getting shot. She even breaks out the, the phony black accent to, 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 to present that. Come on, man. Just for what they say, four years ago, she was saying that she wanted to, you know, do mandatory, mandatory gun buybacks and take the, you know, firearms out of the American citizens' hands. Now, all of a sudden, she is a gun. Is, is her firearm included in that mandatory buyback? I want to know now because she's trying to take away our firearms, but she's allowed to protect herself and her family. Uh, -uh this just does not make sense. Even Oprah's surprised. Listen, look at Oprah's face when she says she's an owner. Look at this. I'm, I'm a gun owner. Tim Walls is a gun. I did not know that. I did not know that either, Oprah. None of us did. None of us. This is absolutely absurd. This is the the cringiest, cringiest fake campaign I've ever seen. I mean, anything that could possibly bit kind of Kamala Harris. She'll say it even if she's went against it in the past. She does not care at this point. God, she'll do and say anything for the vote. Come on, y'all. <laughs> if somebody and I thought that breaks was in my house, they're getting shot. <laughs> <That's perfect. laughs> yes, yes. I, I, I hear that. I hear that. Well, and then the Probably laugh. should not have said that. <laughs> <laughs> but my I, staff will deal with that later. <laughs> yeah. My staff will deal with that later. Yeah, they will deal with that later because you're faker than a $4 bill. I mean, come on. It's clear to see, guys. She's faking it for the votes, guys. Come on. I wanted to show you guys this clip right here. This is Oprah Winfrey. Even she came prepared to fake it, to lie, to gaslight the people during this whole town hall interview. Look at this. is before Kamala Harris even arrived. Listen to Oprah Winfrey just get up there and flat out lie to the people. On the way here, when I was coming through the, the, the airport, Black man stopped me and he said, he knew, I guess he knew I was coming here for something like this. And he goes, well, I'm just tell you, I'm voting for Trump. On the way here. So a black man approached her, stopped her in the airport, no security around her, and said that he was going to vote for Trump because he knew that she was on her way to the town hall. I mean, just that whole makeup just sounds so fake. Um, not to mention, you know, excuse me, Oprah would have, you know, tons of security around her. No way you're getting to Oprah and say, yeah, I'm, I'm voting for Trump. No, she doesn't care. First of all, second of all, guys, she does. You really think that Oprah Winfrey is walking through airport terminals to get to her plane to, to get to her gate? I don't believe so, guys. Oprah Winfrey. And I'll show you guys right now. This is Oprah Winfrey's her private jet, guys. G650 N 540 W. Look at this thing, guys. Absolute crazy private jet. She's no way she's walking through an airport terminal. 
I'm just going to say that much. With a jet like this, you go straight to the jetway. I'm not sure why she felt the need to make up that lie, but it just goes to show you that, you know, these folks on the left, especially, you know, if they're in support or trying to make Kamala look better, you know, they're going to lie. Say the craziest thing is to paint that picture to say that Donald Trump and his supporters are a bunch of lunatics, crazy people that aren't truly for America. I mean, come on, guys, making up that pathetic story. Well, we can clearly fact check. You're on a jet nine times out of 10, probably 10 times out of 10. It's Oprah Winfrey, guys. Come on now. Listen to what TikTok is saying. I'm going to end it here. I just want to show you guys this clip right here. Here are three things that happened during Oprah Winfrey and Kamala Harris's United America event that left Oprah Winfrey totally stuck. Stunned. Just look at her. She has no idea what's happening. Number one, Oprah Winfrey began the entire event by telling everybody she was at the airport and a young black man approached her and said, I'm voting for Trump. I don't believe this story at all. I mean, first of all, Oprah Winfrey flies private. Come She's on not now. walking through the airport like the rest of us. She's not hanging out at the Delta Lounge or walking into the Hudson News to get some gum before her flight. Nobody can get that close to Oprah Winfrey. Nobody can get close enough to Oprah Winfrey to tell her who they're voting for. I hear Stedman Graham needs to make an appointment with Oprah if he wants to talk to her. Number two. Kamala Harris brought up the fact that she's a gun owner once again and told Oprah Winfrey, and I quote, If somebody breaks into my house, they're going to get shot. Look at Oprah. She's like, what What did you just say? Kamala realized her mistake and actually said, I probably shouldn't have said that. My staff's going to have to clean it up later on. <laughs> this, too, is a ridiculous statement to make because she's the vice president of the United States. She's surrounded by Secret Service. Her house is the Naval Observatory. If somebody breaks in, of course they're going to get shot multiple times, but not by <laughs> Kamala. Which is actually a really good thing because it's illegal to discharge a firearm while under the influence of alcohol. And number three, at one point, Kamala Harris was asked by a young married couple, what's your plan exactly for bringing down the cost of, well, pretty much everything? And her response was, hang on, I, I wrote it down so I wouldn't mess it up. In terms of both rightly having the right to have aspirations and dreams and ambitions for your family and working hard and finding that the American dream is for this generation and so many. Hearing it from someone else, though, like hearing it from, you know, a third party. So it just it just sounds so bizarre to start off answering a question like rightly within the right like come on guys listen to this guy he's spitting for your family and working hard and finding that the american dream is for this generation and so many recently for far more elusive than it's been and we need to deal with that i feel you Oprah. i mean come on guys it literally sounds like a robot wrote that like listen for far more elusive than it's been and we need to deal with that I feel you, Oprah. I feel you. We are all Oprah Winfrey at this moment. Yo, there we have it, y'all. Yet another disastrous interview we're seeing for Kamala Harris. The Kamala Harris campaign is truly a dumpster fire on wheels at this point. I mean, come on. What more do we have to do to wake these folks up on the left? I can't, I truly cannot believe that Kamala Harris still has any support after what we've seen on that debate stage, the NABJ, the Oprah Winfrey sit down. I mean, Kamala Harris is showing that she is the biggest liar, the biggest phony and fake that we might ever get as a presidential candidate. I mean, they're covering up for it. Guys, hop in the comment section. Let me know your thoughts on how you think that whole sit down with Oprah Winfrey went. Also, make sure you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. If you'd enjoy more content like this, catch you guys on the next one. We